I have a question on dispensationalism. Um, is there any way to reconcile the kingship of Christ now within a dispensationalist framework? Because I had a conversation with someone and um, I mentioned, you know, that Christ is king and this person said, no, uh, right. he's not, not yet. He's right. Lord, but he's not king. Huh. Um, and I, I really don't want to talk about my, my, the context in which this conversation happened. Uh, I hear so. you. I hear you. I understand where you're coming from. I hear you. Yeah. Um, Okay, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to contextualize this to where it's obvious that, that you are uh, right now, because there are obviously forms of dispensationalism that are moving away from the historically defined categories. But it sounds like you're dealing with um, more of the rock ribbed, um, old style. Uh, maybe even looking at Schofield with uh, a bit of um, uh, concern that he's not quite as strict as he needs to be uh, kind of dispensationalism. And in that context, um, my understanding would would be uh, that there is a, a fatal conflict between the recognition of the full-orbed exaltation of Christ right now and the hoped for future uh, manifestation of of that, though I'll be honest with you, um, in my experience, most dispensationalist writers um, of of old struggled with the unity of the person of Christ in his offices. In other words, um, uh, if you if you look at uh, Westminster Confession, London Baptist Confession, you look at the catechisms. There is an emphasis in uh, covenant theology, reform theology, on Christ as prophet, priest, and king, and that he not only fulfilled these things in his life upon earth, but he, he does so now as king of kings and lord of lords. And the, the, the irony of that is Christ's kingship is just as central to the reality of his resurrected personage as his mediatorship is. So how can you, because, I mean, uh, most dispensationalists that, that I know obviously believe that Christ is interceding uh, before, uh, is at the right hand of the, of the throne of the Father and he's interceding. That's a clear, direct biblical teaching. But that's part of the same reality of, of lordship and kingship and priesthood uh, and mediatorship, and this is all the one Christ. And so the idea that well there there are certain very important aspects of Christ what is what is of really it's Christ's exaltation the the irony is right now the catechism question that we're using at apologia and we need to get to the next one but this is what we've been using for a while uh is talking about Christ's exaltation and what's interesting is it it asks in what what is Christ's exaltation what is involved in that and yes, it's his his exaltation right hand of the Father, but it's his it's his kingly reigning in that role and submission of enemies under his feet and and, and everything that goes along with it, um, which would not fit into the old style um, forms of dispensationalism. But I but I, like I said, um, outside of the IFB, um, where's where is that kind of dispensationalism actually flourishing and growing? Because uh, there just seems to be so many today who have um, recognized that there needs to be a fundamental reorientation of a lot of that stuff uh, to where it becomes leaky dispensationalists uh, and, and things like that over time. But yeah, there, there would seem to be a, a, a contradiction there. And I would encourage any of my dispensationalist friends to... Consider well um, the the glory of the reality that Christ must reign until all his enemies are put under his feet. And if we see his enemies be put, being put under his feet now, and we do, we have seen many of Christ's enemies put under his feet, and there are more to be put under his feet. That means he's reigning. That means he's reigning. The fulfillment of Psalm 2. Uh, put forth that righteous scepter. Reign. That's, that's, that's what Christ is doing, and it's... Um, it's a glorious thing. 